browser password managers, are they a good idea to use them? You're going to find a load of videos saying don't use them. And yes, they do have good reason to say that. However, there is a caveat. If you're somebody who is a bit wary about using a third party password manager and you think it's a bit beyond you, then they can be a good idea. If you're somebody who struggles to think of a unique strong password, that's a good idea. If you're somebody who struggles to remember the different passwords for all the different sites without writing it down, it's a good idea. Nothing wrong with writing it down, as long as you don't keep it next to your computer, keep it in another room somewhere safe. Talk enough for safe, keep it in the safe. So, password managers in a browser, yes, they are a good idea. The security of them have come on leaps and bounds in the last two years. There was a time in the bad old days when all of those passwords were stored in plain text and anybody could read them. So, if you're the only person who's using your computer and you're not sharing it with other people, yes, it is a good idea. If you're sharing it with other people, then it's probably a bad idea. You want a third party browser password manager. Sorry, third party password manager. <laughs> You're tongue tied there. So, yeah, disclaimer I use a third party password manager because it being cross platform. I can use it on an Android, I can use it on a Windows, I can use it on an Apple, and I can use it in Chrome, I can use it in Edge, and I can use it in Firefox. It's really diverse. Whereas Firefox can only be used in Firefox, Edge in Edge, and Chrome in Chrome. So having said that, let's have a look at the differences between these password managers in these different browsers. There are three in this series of videos, so check them all out. And you will find out which of the three is my personal favorite. So without further ado, let's have a look to see how we use them and how safe they can be. OK, so let's have a look at the Google Chrome password manager. Now, as always, I'm going to go to the right hand side, I'm going to click on the Epsilon. And we're going to go to settings. And the reason we want to do this is because we want to make sure that the password manager is turned on. Now, by default, it should automatically be on, but it's always a good idea to double check. So here we are in you and Google, then autofill password manager. Offer to save password. That's on. That's good. Auto sign in again. That's good. If you're using a third party browser uh, password manager, then turn those off. Check password. Now, this is a good feature that used to be only available in paid for third party password managers, but now they're appearing in almost all of the best browsers. This is good because if you go to a website and you sign up to it and then later down sometime down the road, it gets compromised in a data breach. What will happen is you will be notified that that website has been compromised and thereby your details may be compromised. It is at this point that it would be a very good idea to change your password as soon as possible. Now, down below here, we have saved passwords. And as you can see, we haven't got any saved. And down below that, we have never saved. Personally, using a browser password manager, I would put any banking passwords in the never saved, so it would not remember them. That's just in case there is more than one person in the family or in your flat or wherever using the same computer. Okay. So having said that, let's log in to a website. I'm going to use Grammarly. Now, it could be Amazon. Or it could be your banking site or anything else. I'm just using this as an example. Now, I've been to this site several times making different videos. 
and uh, it might ask me for extra security. But as you can see, at this moment, as far as this web browser is concerned, I have not been to this website because it has not filled in my email address. So let's put in an email address. Okay, continue. Now with some web browsers, password managers, they do have the feature where it can generate a unique password for you if you can't think of one. Unfortunately, Chrome doesn't offer that. What you would do is you would right click and if it did offer you it, you could click on for it to generate a password. But as you can see, the only option we got is show all saved passwords. So that's a bit of a downer. Thankfully, I do have a password that I'd used earlier. Now, when I say keep saying password, think a passphrase, a short sentence is better than a password. So for example, you had a grandmother that used to bake cakes. So your password could be grandmother baked cakes. Three separate words, space in between them, just as if you was writing it. And each space is also acts as a character. So it's going to be quite long, but easy to remember. So let's click sign in. Here we go. Chrome is recognized that we haven't been there before and it's offering to save the password. We have save and never. So what we're going to do is we're going to click save. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Next time we go to this site, it will remember that we've been here and it will automatically put in our details for us. But before I show you that, let me show you this before I log out. Over on the account section, and a lot of websites are offering this now, and I strongly recommend that you take full advantage of this. Click on account, and they should have a security tab. Here we go, security. So we click on security. Now Amazon has this, and all the major sites tend to have this now. Two-step verification, also known as two-factor authentication or multi-form authentication. Loads of different terms for it all do basically the same thing. They offer you a belt and braces approach to your online safety. So the belt would be your uh, username and your password. The braces would be this second step verification. So what that would be if you turn that on, that would then uh, send you perhaps an email with a six digit passcode, which would be something like one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Once you've done that, it would then say, how do you want to continue with the two factor authentication? Do you want me to send it to you via text to your phone? Do you want me to send it by email? Or do you want to use an authenticator app on your phone? It's up to you. I've got another video on that. So just wanted you to be aware if they offer you this additional security, please take it. It's there to help improve your safety. So let me log out. And before I go back to the password vault, I just want to show you that it will remember. So we've gone for a cup of tea or it's the next day. We come back and we go to log in. There in the email section, the email has been remembered and it's been filled in for us. We click continue. The password has also been remembered for us. We would then click sign in. It's at that point that the website would then send you a second factor authentication. And that's when you would then enter in the six digit pin. 2FA only adds about 10 seconds to maybe a minute maximum for you to log in. So I don't need to log back in. I just want to show you that I can if I wanted to because it's filled it all in for me.
here in the password vault we have the save passwords and there is Grammarly and there is the username and next to that is the password but we can't see the password it's just a bunch of dots if we wanted to view the password there's a thing here that looks like an eyeball if we were to click on that it's given us some protection it's saying okay I want you to prove that you are who you say you are but I want you to use your Windows security pin number so if you've got a Windows um, computer and you've given a password to each user account it's going to ask you for that to prove that you are who you say you are I'm not going to do that in a moment I want you to, to see that there is that additional security there the epsilon next to the side of that Grammarly one we can copy a password we can edit a password and we can remove the password now if I click copy the password it's going to ask me to enter the Windows security pin number like I said I'm not going to do that because I don't need to but if I did then anytime I click on a password to view it or to edit it it won't ask me again it'll allow me to do that now let's just prove that by clicking edit password it's asking me to enter the password again but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to this is the final straw that, that I don't like about this particular password manager let's click remove now remember the first two attempts we had to have the Microsoft password I just click remove and it's removed it without asking me for a pass for, for the master password it's just mind-blowing you know it's two out of three not bad but the last one it will completely get rid of it for you probably the most important part as well it's gone you can't recover it it's, it's, it's gone so with a third party browser password manager they would ask you before you deleted it so let's come out of this now if you found this video interesting and helpful please give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and if you want to be notified of any further videos that we upload then hit the notification icon bell thank you for watching